Let's take a look at the settings page on Constant Grand. So whether you're using Constant Grand LE, Gold, or uh, Platinum, or Full, whatever edition, all the settings are the same. And uh, when the first thing we see is the lid. So then here is the lid without um, any processing, nice and open, and then with it closed. That same thing, open. And many users have asked, well, why is there very little difference on some of these? Well, it depends on the microphone perspective that you have open. Uh, for example, outside the piano, it will make a difference. And the rooms, it will make a difference. But it won't make a difference on the hammer mics because the hammer mics, whether you have the lid open or closed, are still at the same position. And it's not going to affect the sound, but it will affect the sound on the room. So let's see if we can get just this and then... It's a little bit brighter and then uh, dulled down. Uh, this is all simulated using EQ, but we uh, used a nice model uh, to compare what the actual simulation should be between the two. You're gonna hear barely any difference on the half because you're still allowing sound out. Um, but on the closed, you're gonna hear more of a difference. It's uh, not massive, but it makes a little bit of a difference depending on your playing style. Next, moving on to velocity curves. In velocity curves, let's just see what we have. So with uh, velocity curves, what we can do is when adjust how the keyboard reacts. So if you like to dig in a little bit more and get yeah, more, let's say, aggressive on your playing, so I'll try that again with the strength brought down to nothing. So then this would be if you wanted the ability to play really soft. And the issue would be is that you're not quite getting the full dynamic range, right? By comparison, if we bring that full strength, right? It's very bright and attacky getting that right up on the top. So most keyboard controllers have velocity curves built in and you have the ability to be a little bit more choosy with how you select the curves. So it's up to you. Uh, we've got a nice little selection here that you can go in and get things uh, easy easily selectable with the s curves it brings this is bringing down the lower portions a little bit while emphasizing the upper end so that and then you can do the opposite direction so that you get more of a middle tone maybe this would be a little bit better on an inside mic that you can hear that so no problem with that uh, let's move on to pedal with the pedal we have a few different settings sympathetic resonance we went through in another video but I'll do a quick uh, run through anytime you see the settings over here most of them are translated over to the main page across here and makes them nice and easy to access as long as them along with the mics at the same time time but here it's nice to have a settings page that's kind of dedicated to the settings as well so you can get around sympathetic resonance if i hold down a note a flat in this case and then i play and then i turn up the volume you can hear that that's adding in the resonance and this is all simulated still using samples but it's simulated using the samples and you can adjust the sympathetic resonance there Authentic pedal is more of an experiment than anything. Uh, I would tell users to turn this off until we get the settings just right. This is supposed to allow you that if you pl play a chord and then hold down the pedal, that some of the energy from your chord can go into the notes around it, surrounding it. Uh, the issue is that right now, it'll be a... You can see it's not quite set up perfectly for that. Continuous pedal... 
And by the way, I'm working with a beta version of this as we do these demos, so that's the reason why some of these settings aren't quite exact. Continuous pedal, it, uh, as we are showing before, allows me to hold down the sustain, but if I let up halfway, the sustain will just be just a little bit, right? Depending on where you are. And it also allows you to do some catch pedaling. I don't know if catch, let's see with catch pedal, so I'll So then I can, um, I'll let up on the piano, pedal, pardon me, and then push it down really fast. So it still catches some of the sound as it goes through. That took a lot of scripting, I can tell you about that. Uh, touch response. So with touch response, this is the difference between the loudest, let's see what we've got it set at, 89%. So if you bring this down to, I don't know, 60 or so, what we get is the softest notes become louder and proportionally the louder velocities are not quite as loud by comparison so this is like your dynamic range so when you combine velocity curves with touch response you're going to get that ability to See, I can get very soft on these notes and they still have some volume. But if I bring up the sensitivity, you'll notice that their volume relative is decreasing, right? So you have to find where you think the softest level should be. compared to the loudest you're going to play. And it gives you the dynamic range. And we leave it quite dynamic in the presets. At 89, it's gonna give us like this huge. Huge range on it. Okay, moving on to pedal noise. Pedal noise is exactly what it sounds like. It depends on which microphone perspective you have. I'm going to pull up the hammers here so we can hear these. And we can barely hear the pedal noise. And there it is. Uh, these are all set up on round robin. Uh, so we got seven variations on the soft. If you bring up the mod wheel, you're going to hear it a lot heavier. So that's kind of ridiculous, right? How loud that is. But for some people, you might want it depending on your style of playing. Um, if you're in a heavy, dense mix, you might want to turn this off and just to save some voices. Next is your key up. And key up is the sound of the keyboard mechanism. And I'm going to crank it a little bit. Uh, with the pedal down, it only works with the pedal down, and then when I let up on the keys. Let's crank it a bit so you can hear it. And it adds quite a bit to the voice count, but it gives you that more mechanical sound. In my opinion, the best way to set this is to kind of match the level of the pedal down samples. Now, the pedal down samples, when you let up on the pedal, have a, a key up sound associated with them. You can hear them. They're integrated into there. There we go. They're working on both. So you want to kind of adjust it like this. Obviously, it's too much. So you can kind of decide how much is necessary. And again, depending on your mic perspective, if I pull these down and make a room microphone perspective, you're going to be a lot further away. You can still hear it, but it all depends on what the level is and their, how realistic you want the piano to be. If you're in a dense mix and you're not doing solo stuff, it's probably best to pull it off to save some voices for you. Next is the release. I typically love the sound of the released. 
and particularly uh, on the close mics and I have it sat naturally uh, maybe a tad louder than most people like it so let's just hear let's adjust it so this is way too loud and you can hear the blend changes turn it right off and then with it on again too loud and then at a reasonable level might be more like minus 30 sorry about that minor chord Okay, so then uh, for everyone who's trying production, or pardon me, concert grand, you're going to want to set the release to what you like. Some tuning options over here, if you're going into um, some Baroque music or whatever, you can adjust it and you can adjust, you know, equal temperament. Most users, you're going to leave it on equal temperament. Next is the reverb settings. Uh, the reverb, just like we mentioned in another video, it's always best to choose your preset over here first, even if you're make an adjustment afterwards before you actually select a reverb over here. So then there's a whole chamber. Um, this down here shows you the different reverbs that we have. And uh, that doesn't mean that you can't use your own reverb as well, not necessarily within the contact, but within your DAW. But now uh, this reverb just gives you some options. A couple of things to note about the reverb is in order to get it to work, you have to add some reverb. There we go. Lots of reverb on that plate. And if I just go back in to the settings, you can adjust the return, how much of this is coming back. And then this is the input on each microphone perspective. And then the output is coming from the return. Pre-delay is the difference between when the uh, sound, the delay that happens with the reverb and give more a sense of space by opening up the pre-delay. I don't know if it goes up to 200 milliseconds or something here. You can hear a splash effect that happening that the reverb is too late there. So if we shorten it up. Okay, so the other thing to mention is that if I have reverb sent on a channel, and I pull that channel all the way down, but not quite off, so you can barely hear it. So right now I'm going to hear the room sound of the piano. But the reverb is what's called pre-fader, so the volume level here, unless it's set to zero, uh, doesn't affect the reverb level. So then we get some nice reverb. So I'll do that over here while I just bring up the hammer mics a little bit and crank some reverb. So then I'll add some a little bit of ribbons. There's a lot of low end in that reverb, right? And you can hear the release is still a little high on some of those. So you can turn the reverb on and off right there. And our reverb can be sampled reverb or it can be algorithmic. So convolution is the samples of our actual reverb spaces. Algorithmic is just a math model of the reverb. So then um, your choice, most people choose convolution for a more realistic sounding reverb. That is the settings page. And in the next videos, we'll take a look at the other sections of Concert Grand.